Hello everyone, welcome to this research methods tutorial about variables. Firstly, just a quick note about how to use this tutorial. As an absolute minimum, the slides with the pause button must be in your notes. Okay, so what I'd suggest is that you watch the video first and then pause the video to take your notes at the end of the slide. You should try to add into your notes some examples to illustrate what we're talking about or maybe some questions about the material um, if you've got questions, then we can discuss those in class. You could, if you really, really wanted to, if you're really keen on the subject, read around the subject by following the web links or reading about that particular piece of content in your textbooks. OK, so let's have a talk about what we mean when we use the word variable. In a psychological investigation, a variable is just something which can vary or change. If we're doing an experiment, this is where the researcher will deliberately change one variable, which is called the independent variable, or IV for short, and then they observe the effect that this has on another variable, which is known as the dependent variable, or DV. In a correlation, there are still always two variables, but they are not deliberately changed. They're called covariables. It's really, really important in an exam, never write IV and DV in relation to a correlational study. We'll talk a bit more about why later. So just to illustrate IVs and DVs, here's an example that you might remember from school science lessons. In this experiment, we want to measure the effects of sunlight on plant growth. So to do this, we can set up two experimental conditions got one with 30% sunlight and one with 70% sunlight. This is the independent variable because this is what's changing between those two conditions. What we're interested in measuring is how tall the plants grow in each condition. So what we'd expect to see is that plants in the 30% condition won't grow as tall as plants in the 70% condition. So one way to remember this is that the dependent variable depends on which condition the plant is in in this example. I said earlier that correlations don't have IVs or DVs. Correlations are very different from experiments. In a correlation we're looking for a relationship between two variables. For example, I could see if there's a relationship between height and foot length. I can't deliberately change either of those variables. I can't make somebody shorter or taller and I can't make their feet longer. So there can't be an independent variable because an independent variable is something that is deliberately changed. So what I could do to do a correlation in this study is just take the two measurements from each participant. I could measure how tall they are and take a ruler and measure the length of their feet and then see if the two are related in any way. So to see if you understand the concept of IVs and DVs, have a go at this. Here's a research scenario. A researcher wants to find out whether people remember pictures better than words. So she gives 10 participants a list of 10 words and another group of 10 participants a page of 10 pictures to memorise for 30 seconds. And then she counts how many each person remembers correctly. So have a go at seeing if you can identify the IV and the DV. You can just pause the video for a moment while you do that. Did you get it right? So in this example, the independent variable, the thing that's being changed, is whether participants are given words or pictures. And what we're measuring as a result of that is how many items they remember correctly. One type of variable that researchers don't want in their studies is called an extraneous variable. And it's any variable which could affect the results of an investigation, but which isn't the IV. Okay, so use the word extra in the word extraneous as a clue. It's just an extra variable which might interfere with the results. These could be situational variables, so things like the temperature or the time of day or the noise levels that an experiment is carried out. Think about a memory experiment. If one group of participants does the experiment at 7 o'clock in the morning and another group does it maybe at 5 o'clock in the evening, 
there might be differences in how awake and how alert they are, which will affect the results. Those differences have nothing to do with the independent variable, so they could just confuse or interfere with those results. There could also be differences in the participants, so participant variables. Things like intelligence or anxiety levels in each participant, how well they can concentrate, these can all have an effect on our results. So if by some chance a lot of the participants in one group are very, very intelligent, that can give us a, a false indication of our results. Researchers should always try to control these variables so that they don't cause misleading results. One way that we can control variables, situational variables for example, is to make sure that if we're running the experiment several times, each time is carried out at the same time of day. So let's just see if you've got the hang of identifying extraneous variables. We used the same research scenario as last time. A really crucial exam skill is being able to fully explain your point. So for example, saying something like, the participant's first language could be an extraneous variable, because if a participant in the word condition speaks English as a second language, they may struggle to remember as many words compared to someone whose first language is English. This could lower the mean result of the word condition, and thus give a false result. So have a go, use that scenario, write down as many extraneous variables as you can think of which could affect this particular experiment. It's really important to look at this experiment rather than just thinking generally about any experiment. An examiner will want to see if they give you a background scenario that you can think on your feet and apply what you know to that particular situation. The other thing an examiner would be looking for is for you to explain why that would be an extraneous variable. Have a go, see how you get on. Okay, so here are some examples of extraneous variables that I came up with. Um, let's just look at something like word associations. This could affect people's results in the word condition. Say, for example, if I've got words in there that are related to food, um, participants might really like certain types of food, they might dislike other types of food, so they might be more likely to remember those and that could be an extraneous variable. We've already discussed things like time of day, first language. Some participants might just not have very good memories. If by chance the majority of those are in one condition, then that will affect the results of that condition. Okay, the last thing we need to talk about is what's known as operationalizing variables. So to operationalize a variable just means that we're clearly stating or defining how that variable is going to be measured or tested. So for example, if we were using the word memory, memory is far too broad a concept to be able to measure or test. And there are lots and lots of different types of memory, like memory for what words mean, or for events in our life, or for tying shoelaces. Um, it's too broad just to use the word memory. So we need to really, really narrow it down to the particular area of interest that we have in memory. So for example, the number of items recalled from a list of 10 is much more specific than just saying, somebody's going to have a better memory for words than pictures. Okay, so lastly, why not have a go at trying to operationalize these variables? So one example that we could look at is driving ability. How exactly can we measure somebody's driving ability, whether they're a good or bad driver? And the other example that you can have a go at is physical aggression. What definition can we give for physical aggression? So go ahead and pause the video while you have a go at those. OK, here are my operationalised definitions of these variables. So for driving ability, we could measure the number of driving test errors made by participants during a 30 minute drive along a set route. Now that's really, really specific. And similarly for physical aggression, we can say that maybe measure the number of times a child punches, kicks or shoves another person during a school break time. So here I've specified it's only those three behaviours that I'm interested in. So that's my definition of physical aggression. Anything else doesn't matter. OK. And that's all for this tutorial. Thanks very much and I'll see you again soon. Bye.